Warren, in trying to discern the great question of whether God exists, neuroscience suddenly inserts itself into this question because there are discoveries about the brain that seem to affect religious belief. So atheists say, see, it's just a biological phenomena and has no existence in the real world. Theists, on the other hand, would say, see, God put it there so we could believe in God. So as a neuroscientist and as a believer, what's this God module all about? Well, the God module was a, a terminology that came really from V.S. Ramachandran, who is a neurologist and neuroscientist who is looking at persons with temporal lobe epilepsy and looking at the history of temporal lobe epilepsy. There are some persons with that disorder, not all, but some, for whom the aura and the experience around the uh, seizure event um, is experienced as deeply religious, um, as um, uh, lights and wonder. And uh, one patient said something about the bright sun and the image of God. And these were so deeply uh, impacting that they, they were um, considered to be deep and important uh, religious experiences. Uh, Dostoevsky had epilepsy, and Dostoevsky wrote, writes in The Idiot uh, about Prince Mishkin having seizures and a wonderful several pages of describing these seizures as wonderfully religious, or the experience around the seizures as wonderfully religious. And Mishkin says, uh, so what if it is sickness? One would give one's whole life for this experience. <laughs> well, you can take that and, and, and say, well, we have uh, um, some neural structures on our brain that, that um, fire off, and when these fire off, that is a religious experience, and it's nothing but that. A um, couple of, of um, thoughts about that. One is that not everybody that gets the same sort of, relig of epileptic seizure and the same sort of subjective experience interprets it religiously. So some people will have that experience, and for them it won't be interpreted religiously. And I think whether or not it's interpreted religiously has a lot to do with the nature of the person, their experience in the past, how they, what they think these sorts of things actually mean in the world, which comes prior to the seizures, not created by the seizure. So to call the temporal lobe areas that get active in these things a God module, I think is kind of an over-interpretation. I think... Um, they, uh, when those areas are active, we do interpret things as very deeply significant and, and personal, but any kind of, of um, interpretation can be overlaid on that. So I don't think it's necessarily a God module. <laughs> How about some of the other ways that, um, that religious experience can be elicited uh, with uh, psychoactive drugs? Do they affect the same area? How do, how do they work? Uh, yeah, somewhat the same system. I mean, the drugs are operating more broadly uh, than one would, um, than the focus of the epileptic seizure and temporal lobe epilepsy. Sure. The problem with seizures is once they get going, they spread to a whole lot of areas. Mm -hmm. So in both cases, you probably have a lot of brain involved. Um, so, uh, but the subjective, but the kind of ex uh, systems they're working in are the systems that cause us to feel things to be meaningful, uh, interpret our personal experiences as more meaningful. So whatever experience I'm having at that point, if the temporal lobe is going off or if I have LSD, those are much more important and more mm -hmm. meaningful experiences than if that wasn't true and you were Well, meaningfulness is important uh, yeah. to, as humans, not yeah. just in a religious experience, but, but all sorts of negotiating through life and su succeeding right. in society and yeah. survival. Yeah. Meaningfulness is yeah. important. So, so you would expect something yeah. in the brain to resonate with that. So in terms of understanding human mental activity and human experience, it's a really important phenomenon, really important studies, both the drug study or drug experiences and drug studies and the studies of persons with temporal low epilepsy. Or but brain when, stimulation. Or brain stimulation, yeah, the, the transcranial magnetic stimulation that, yeah. that can put little magnets here and you get uh, activity in a brain and then you maybe experience that as religious. But uh, I think whether or not 
a person interprets those as religious, it has it due to the nature of the person and the context in which it occurs. And something about those two cause a similar kind of experience to in one person be called religious and another person cause non-religious, which means there's, it's not a God module. It's a significance module, mm -hmm. but it's not a God module. Yeah. Now, uh, if I were coming at this, and, and I am wondering about mm -hmm. whether God exists, mm -hmm. I, I have my entire mm -hmm. life, and mm -hmm. as everyone mm -hmm. vacillates mm -hmm. and oscillates from one from one to the other, um, that that would that would sort of indicate that I can explain the entirety of religious experience, if not the entirety of religious interest, based upon a certain brain uh, structure and chemistry and does, does that does that remove some of the the ultimate potential significance of what religion is if we can ex explain it completely i don't need god or anything supernatural to explain everything you just told me that would be true if if you presume that that god and religiousness is something inside coming out but if God is outside there and is something to which I respond, then I respond with my whole self. And, uh, and at times it would include systems of significance and uh, involved with the temporal lobe or involved in those systems that become active with drugs. So the fact that um, I might have an experience and interpret it as religious doesn't have any theological or rational um, impact on whether God exists out there or not. God could exist or God could not exist, and I have or have not <laughs> these same experiences. <laughs> so I think those are two sort of disjunct concepts, whether or not God exists and whether or not I experience God in certain ways, sometimes triggered by or influenced by a unusual experience in my brain. The okay. second thing I want to say is that to to narrow religiousness to those kind of abnormal experiences you get in temporal lobe epilepsy and um, drug experiences are, is to incredibly compress religious life, for, for which is not true of most people. Those kind of experiences are not normative for people's religiousness. People's religiousness is a wider range of sorts of things, and it's not just those sorts of events. 